so that they lock in place. I also preheat a little bit to make it easier to work. It's a lot easier and safer to take the nozzle out with a socket. The copperhead's going to put a space between the nozzle and the Bowden tube. This will let us print at higher temperatures without degrading the tube. Measure the space between the heat sink and the heat block for later on. I try to loosen the heat block a little bit while it's still locked in place. Unlock the throat and carefully remove it. Everything was smooth until this point. It would have been a lot easier if I removed the thermistor and the heating element. I also should have used plier plier wrench instead of a monkey wrench to get a better grip on the heating block. The top of the throat is probably around 50 or 60 degrees. You can handle it, but of course you need to be careful. And definitely you don't want to drop the hot parts like I did. It would be a good idea to clean up everything, especially if you had leaks before. I didn't buy the official slice engineering thermal paste. I don't know, I might regret it in the future. I have Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme laying around the house. It would have been better to use Hydronaut for long term performance. You can use CPU grease inside the heatsink. This paste performs up to 350 degrees and we shouldn't have to worry about drying out to under 90 degrees. If we put it inside the heat block, it'll dry out and probably cause the heat break to seize inside. If this setup causes any trouble, I'll post a quick update video. I'm going to install the copper head with the threads flush inside the heat block to keep the same spacing as before. It would be interesting to see if there is a performance difference regarding flow if we back the copper head out a little bit and insert the nozzle one or two turns more. And let's just stop for a moment here because there's something important that I want to show you. If we look closely we can see that the support screws and the copper head are not centered. So what happens is when we tighten the support screws it actually pulls back on the copper head bending it out of position. We need to make sure not to over tighten the screws or we may cause some damage. If you installed the copper head on your printer, let me know your opinion in the comments. Maybe give a thumbs up and subscribe if you're liking the video. The silicone sock doesn't have enough clearance to go on nicely. So we have to loosen the hot end. Just make sure it's perpendicular to the build plate when you tighten it again. I started with a preheat of 40 degrees and we can see with the old setup that our sensor is getting almost the full temperature, but with the copper head installed. The sensor is only seeing about 25 degrees. So we set the temperature to 260 and let it sit for 10 minutes. Within two minutes, the old setup already surpassed the maximum temperature of my sensor. The copper had reached 52.4 after 30 minutes. I continued running the test for three hours and the temperature remained stable. I didn't have time to dial in the settings. I have to go on a business trip, but I wanted to do a quick test to make sure everything works. Unfortunately, I broke my 3D touch bracket. You can see it's bent just a little bit. 
I had to do an emergency repair using a lighter. It worked, but it's far from perfect. Be careful with your Z offset if you try to install a copperhead. My probe broke, so I'm not certain, but the nozzle seems about one millimeter lower than before. Now I'm printing a stringing test. It's actually the first time to print one. One thing we need to do with the copperhead is reduce the retraction distance about two or three millimeters. This is to prevent hot filament from getting pulled into the cold area of the heat break. If you don't change your retraction, your extruder is probably going to start skipping. I also didn't do a PID tune. Later I should check it. Overall it's not bad, it needs some dialing in, maybe even take a second look at my e-steps, but at least there's no major issues. I tried a test cube as well and I was pretty surprised by how smooth the layers were. I think my hot end was a little loose before trying out this mod. I forgot to turn on infill so it started to fill the cube with spaghetti. The amazing thing is somehow it recovered and it started to print the Z in midair. The inside of the Z is a bit of a mess, but the final top surface looks good. This video wasn't sponsored. So far I'm happy and I'm looking forward to trying some new higher temperature filament. But if any issues come up, I will make an update video. I'll put some links in the description. Thank you to everyone who checks them out. Thank you all for watching. See you again next time.